Donald Trump did a rally in the Bronx because, well, you know, he has to, his trials and such, which, by the way, he wants you to believe he can't get a fair trial in New York because they're all liberals, but now he's doing rallies in New York saying he can win the state. Can somebody make that make sense to me? What he's really doing is trying to appeal to a state that knows who he is, has long understood the evil he represents, of which, by the way, AOC live streaming, reacting to it with Hasanabi got more viewers than his stream did. So uh, great job, Trump. But he also slurred his way through another horrendous speech filled with lies and misinformation. So why not debunk everything he had to say? Once again, it's pretty easy to do. There's nothing of substance. And let's start with him bringing up his own past in housing. 68 story building on Fifth Avenue is hard with all you have to deal with. I mean, you have unions, you have legal entanglements, property rights zoning. But the hardest thing that Trump had to deal with were the black people looking to rent that he would charge double to stave them off because... Well, he didn't want to rent to black people. Or maybe it was how hard he had to work to guarantee that no black people would build his buildings because, well, he didn't think they'd do a good job. And, and I'm also sure that he hated unions, making him actually pay his workers fair wages as well and giving them lunch breaks and all those out, like outrageous and completely unjustified ass that workers have, you know, like protective gear and safety standards at work. Like, how dare you guys? And it is hardworking patriotic. And this is something you can say it and you can say it a million times. David Pakman has a few interviews with mental health professionals who he has analyzed Biden and Trump both in the the most interesting conclusion that they all drew is that despite Biden losing a step due to his age, he often quickly corrects himself when he misspeaks, showing that he understands reality still, much more so than Trump, who continues on without even realizing his delusion seemingly, which is much more scary and telling at this age. Obviously, both men are going to lose a step, but one walks the line between reality and fiction without realizing it. When Trump confuses Nikki and Nancy, he keeps going. When he says he's running against Obama, he keeps going. And that's a sign, again, of somebody who just doesn't understand the line between truth and fiction that he's walking so delicately on. Everybody was better. There wasn't one group, not one that went down. And it was bringing our country together. We have lost respect all over the world. We were the most respected country in the world four years ago. We were respected more than our country was ever respected. This is hilarious considering Trump is the first president since Hoover to leave office having lost Americans jobs. Unemployment was over 13%. We entered a recession in 2020 where industrial production fell worse than it did during the Great Depression. And four years ago, Americans were jobless and dying while Trump went on national TV saying you can inject bleach and it'll help. And also, according to all polling of international and world leaders, Trump brought confidence in the U.S. and the presidency down from where Obama had it. And it's currently higher now under Biden. So he's just lying again. Xi of China, when you see Kim Jong-un of North Korea, when you see... Putin and you see all of these people, they're, they're at the top of their game. Now, of course, Democrats are the communists. Trump just likes saluting communist nations leaders and say they're doing a good job and mentions how much he wants to be like them and is overly friendly to them and allowed their help in the 2016 election. It's kind of crazy, the projection. Trump really is the master at pointing at Democrats and painting them in a light before it becomes obvious that it's really him. Not that he would ever do communism. That's way too based for Trump. But damn, would he love to say some of the authoritarianism that you see in these countries. If you enjoyed this video, we're Social Society. We're a commentary channel influenced by politics, society, and the economy. We are pretty left-leaning on this channel, but we're open to our right-wingers as well. The biggest thing here is having conversations that get everyone to the bottom of the truth. If that sounds like something that could interest you, consider smashing that subscribe button, leaving us a like, or even commenting on this video. We even have memberships available as low as $3 if you'd like to support, because the only way we become a society is together.